our goal at Impossible is to build the highest performance unmanned aircraft that can possibly be built with electric propulsion. Spencer Gore and his team at Impossible Aerospace want to make air travel all electric and do away with polluting jet fuel. For the time being, it's focused on completely rethinking drone design and built a battery in the shape of a drone's fuselage, therefore maximizing flight time. Gore was inspired in large part by his time as a battery engineer at Tesla, where he lived in an RV in the parking lot when he started. If you think about the two things that stress people out in Silicon Valley the most, it's commuting and paying rent. If you, if you don't have to do those two things, it's, uh, life is pretty good. I can't imagine a better place to have learned really important lessons about shipping products and building functional teams and getting through difficult times than, than that team at that time. Gore has come a long way since then. Impossible Aerospace has raised more than $11 million from investors like Airbus, Bessemer Venture Partners, and an ex-Tesla executive from Eclipse Ventures to rethink aviation. Where I think Impossible and Tesla are similar is that we, we both started with some pretty fundamental math that showed that if you want to make a compelling and, and useful vehicle, you need a pretty big battery pack. And I think that what most automakers have done with, with their electric cars and what most drone companies have done with their electric drones is to start by designing the car and designing the drone before they think about the battery. And typically, that leads to, to too small of a percentage of the vehicle's weight and volume being, being made of a battery. Your iPhone is basically a battery with a screen on it. A MacBook is basically a battery and a keyboard and a screen. Model, Model S X3, there are batteries with seats on them and, and you know some cosmetic stuff attached. And our drone is a battery with propellers on it. Its first product, US-1, can fly for up to two hours on a single charge. Just as Tesla had rethought how a car should be built from the ground up based on the physics, so had we for aircraft. Quite a bit more than half of the aircraft's mass is made of battery cells. And in fact, the entire structure is one battery pack. US-1 is now available to first responders. It can fly in, in certain configurations up to two hours on a battery charge. And we also offer a configuration for first responders today that has a flight time of, of about an hour and 20 minutes that contains a, a ruggedized tactical enclosure, a dual optical and thermal cameras. Drones have become a valuable tool for first responders, aiding police and firefighters with aerial operations. Within minutes, they can be launched to help law enforcement with situational awareness, fight fires, and aid in search and rescue operations. Drones are quickly replacing helicopters to do these tasks. There are 18,000 municipal police departments across the country, and, and I think 32,000 fire departments across the country. And about 60 municipalities have access to a helicopter. And, and part of the reason for that is that police helicopters can cost $5 million. And and what we've all realized is that a drone can provide about half of the utility of a helicopter at less than 1% of the price. And that's a really big deal. But the problem is that with, with most drones that are out there today, you have a flight time with cameras that's on the order of about 25 minutes. What we're able to do is offer the endurance of a helicopter, but with the convenience and cost of a drone. But the company's ambitions stretch far beyond drones for first responders. It is hoping to take the same engineering approach used for US-1 and apply it to aircraft. These drones are the world's first production electric aircraft, and they are direct predecessors to the aircraft that I think we'll, we'll be flying on in the future. Electricity from renewable sources can be very cheap, and in parts of the country it's ridiculously cheap, like the Pacific Northwest. Compared to jet fuel, flying will be uh, will be a bargain. There are some really exciting options. I mean, we're really just scratching the surface with what is possible with this new with this new propulsion paradigm. There are other companies working towards electric airplanes like Pipistrel and Aviation. But Gore says Impossible Airspace plans to completely redesign the airplane. Are you building a battery that's flying? Or are you trying to put batteries where they really don't belong? And it's, it's no different than what the early automakers did, you know, by, by taking cars that were built for gas engines, taking out the engines and putting in batteries, and, and you, you end up with something that drives for 60 to 80 miles. Compared to what Tesla did, of building a battery pack that was shaped like a car, and then putting a car around it. And I think that Impossible's contribution is to uh, really push the envelope of what is possible from a performance standpoint. Uh, with electric propulsion. 
to build battery electric aircraft that can compete with and substitute for conventionally fueled aircraft. The aircraft that need to be flying 30 years from now need to be in development today. And, and so it's really important that we get started. We're not gonna stop until it's possible to travel anywhere in the world emissions free. It has to be done. Thank you.